So when it comes to selecting short implant as an option, I would like to select this option only if this is a viable option. I would not be interested in using short implant in atrophic maxilla or mandible if this was a compromise option. I'm not interested to say, well, you know, we can place a real implant or we can put a short implant, but you can't really eat with it. I don't think that's an option for me. So let's see if short implant is a viable, real option for reconstruction of our patients. So the first question that I have as a clinician is a biomechanical question. Are short implants biomechanically sound? Are they able to withstand occlusal forces? So this is more of a theoretical, mathematical type of, of uh, biomechanical analysis. But more importantly, I would like to know whether or not short implants have the clinical performance. So I would like to see data from clinical studies to document their viability. So let's take the first point, which is to determine whether implant length plays any role in the biomechanical ability of, of implants to withstand occlusal forces. And the type of analysis that's done is called finite element analysis, which is very typical of any kind of biomechanical analysis or even engineering analysis to determine load distribution. So in this study, they have looked at implants of different lengths, anywhere from 8 to 17 millimeters, and they kept the diameter the same and asked the question, are there any differences in the ability of these implants to distribute the load to the surrounding bone? So one would expect that if there's a biomechanical advantage to using longer implants, as we increase the length, we should expect to get reduction in the stress to the surrounding bone. Well, is that what happens? Not really. In fact, this is a flat liner, which means that the difference in the load distribution, the stress distribution between a 8 millimeter and a 17 millimeter implant is only 7%. So there is no real biomechanical advantage to using longer implants. What about diameter? Is diameter a consideration? Well, the converse study was done to look at the effect of diameter by increasing the diameter from a 2.9 up to 6.5 while keeping the length constant. Well, this time, there's a significant drop in the stress to the surrounding bone. In fact, there's a 60% reduction of the stress to the surrounding bone by using wide diameter implants. So I don't want you to use this data to run now to your office tomorrow and say, well, I'm going to use wide diameter, but not short uh, and short implants. Well, biomechanics only tell part of the story. In fact, Sometimes this type of biomechanical analysis can actually fool us because biomechanics is one aspect of our consideration. We have to always also take into account the physiological consideration. As I will discuss to you, it's not so wise to use wide diameter implants anyway because of other problems that wide diameter implants have.